Austin, uh, tell us about the transformation that you went through going through the Rapid Fire Music Academy. Yes, for sure. So basically, when I first started out, I think it was like late July or yeah, July was when we first um, interacted with each other. I came across one of his videos that was like, um, want to know why you're stuck in the growth of your music career? And I was like, yeah, this sounds like me. Let me let me let me check him out real quick. Let me see what he's all about. And, you know, we we got to talking, you know, we booked our one on one call within that month. And, you know, um, that's when that's when big things start to happen, because before before I was working with Lee, I was um, I was using different programs like on my phone, such as like GarageBand and BandLab, which at the time they were OK. But, you know, me and Lee, we realized that it wouldn't really get me that far. So we started talking into like certain equipments to invest in, like microphones, pop filters, um, audio interface those sorts of things. So yeah, I definitely leveled up within that month and um, got to join his like rapid fire Academy. I think probably a, a couple days later or so met this really wonderful community of really talented people who I am just so grateful to associate myself with. Like these guys are just killing it, just doing their thing. And just, I, I, <laughs> I'm so honored to be a part of this community. It's it's a blessing for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Thank you for saying that. That's great. That's great. And you've been, you've been, I mean, you're an amazing contributor as well, which is great. Thank you know, you. you always give people great feedback. When we do our workshops, you're always super active. So it's awesome to have you. And I think if I remember correctly, when we first got on a call, you like really didn't have the right equipment like you were mentioning and i think i sent you away with like information to go get it i don't think i enrolled you on our first call i think it was like go get this equipment and come back to me and i remember i pretty sure your hair was blue at the time yeah um technically it was like a jade color um my bestie did it for me as like a a birthday tribute yeah. So well, that was, that was pretty sweet. I remember that. I just want to mention that for your, for your time thing. But yeah, I remember like you got on the call, you weren't, you didn't even have the gear, but I was like, Hey, this is the gear you need. Come back to me when, when you're ready. And then you did, you came mm -hmm. back and I was like, wow. Okay. He's like, Hey Lee, I'm ready to join your Academy. I'm like, awesome. So got you enrolled. And so how, I mean, just, if you don't have the exact number, that's okay. But like rough numbers speaking, like how many instrumentals songs have you written, mixed and mastered and released? Like how, how much, what's the output actually been? Um, Before the Academy? Sure. Let's do before and after. That'd be great. Okay. So I think I had put out like two songs. Like I, I, I call them like demos. Cause you know, like they're, they're okay. But at some point I will like go back and like refine them to sound more, um, mm -hmm professional you know like more full if that makes sense mm -hmm. but yeah i had um i had two full songs out which are like on soundcloud if you you know if you go to my ch channel and check them out um and then after i joined the academy um that number the number of songs i've made like skyrocketed so um I'm trying to figure out where I remember I know I know, so, I, know I had um I know I had like typed out like the number of instrumentals and stuff I had made after joining the academy. I think it was like 32, 33 instrumentals. That sounds pretty accurate. That sounds right up the alley of of what it was. And I and I want to say too, I'm kind of looking through the slack here. We probably should have done this before the call, but who the fuck cares? Um I think what I'm seeing here is 23 beats okay it's not 32 so 23 beats okay. what i'm seeing here you correct me if i'm wrong i'm seeing 23 beats out of those 23 i have five with vocals oh yeah there of, it is yeah. yeah one of them is mixed and mastered which was someday and you've actually released that song someday right so just it, the numbers right 23 of them five recorded songs and one of them released which is means it was fully mixed and mastered as well right yes mm. That's insane. So before joining the Academy, before you and I had ever talked, do you remember what were your goals with music? 
my goals for music was just to kind of feel more confident with like my creative flow, like not think too much, just, you know, take the ideas that I already have in here and just, 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 just put them out, you know, like who cares how it looks when you, when you first jot them down, like at some point it's gonna, you know, it's gonna, the idea is gonna get there, but you just gotta like, you just gotta have the ideas right then mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, okay, I want to get more confident with my creative flow. What are they now? Now that you've clearly gotten pretty confident with your creative flow, you've done a lot in the Academy. What are your goals looking like now for music? Definitely, I would like to get more consistent with making my beats and my, um, like, just just getting more consistent with um, releasing my music, you know, like, becoming more sufficient or efficient, um, okay. whatever the term is. Both work. Um, <laughs> I think you meant efficient, but both work. So, okay, so so now the turn now it's like, I want to become efficient and level up that way. And you're starting to release music now that you fully produced, which is awesome. Cause you can put it out on Spotify, Apple music and all that stuff, instead of just being limited to SoundCloud. And so like, well, let me ask you this. I know beforehand you'd only put out two demos, but now that you fully produce, you make your own instrumentals, record, mix and master. What doors do you feel like that's open for you? I definitely feel like, you know, it's, it's allowing my song to become more um, seen because it's, it's getting out to all these other different platforms rather than just the one, you know? So I definitely feel like it's more diverse, you know, cause mm -hmm. some people may not have SoundCloud. They may have just Spotify, Apple music or whatever. So allowing my song to be on all these different like um, music stores, it's, um, it allows for, I guess, a more broad audience, or I guess for more people to, sure. to check me out. And that's, that's awesome. Sure. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And it just makes you more legit, obviously, as an artist, right? So, and the cool thing is you own the music because you make the beat, you mix, master, you own the process. What's that been like feeling that sense? I don't know if you felt that as well as uh, other people. Like, is do you feel like kind of a proud, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like, do you feel like a proud sense of like ownership or like maybe like just super proud of the progress you've made? Like, what, can you speak on just, the fact that you own the whole process and you own the rights to the music, like the ownership. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess, you know, even before like the rapid fire music Academy, I was just like, you know, I've had this mindset of, you know, trying to, you know, m make whatever music I'm making kind of like my own, like try to be as original and authentic as possible, you know, just to kind of showcase, you know, my evolution, like what I'm capable of and, um, yeah, I'm, I definitely see quite, quite the change, you know, from before and after, like, I'm just, I'm just mind blown. You mm. know? What's got you the most mind blown? I guess just the fact, like, like last month when I put out my first song someday, I was like, wow, I'm actually doing it. Like when the moment that happened, I was just like. I don't know how to explain it, but it was just, it was such a surreal moment, like such a full circle moment, like everything that I've ever dreamed of in a sense. I know it sounds cliche, but you know, like it's, it's true. You know, like I just, I'm just really passionate about music and, you know, just trying to um, morph my ideas lyrically, musically, you know, and the feedback I've been getting, you know, since then has been fantastic. And I'm just, I'm just so blessed. I, I'm so happy. <laughs> Sick, dude. I'm how can happy for you. Too. I don't mean I'm to get emotional, but you know. It's... Nah, let's get there. Let's go there, dude. Um, That's awesome, man. I mean, honestly, just the other night, not last weekend, but the weekend before, I went to dinner with a bunch of friends and my wife. I showed them your song because it had come out quite recently. I showed them all three versions. I was like, guys, you guys got to hear. You did not. Yeah, that was when Corey was in town. So he obviously <laughs> already knew it. But my other friends, I was like, guys, I got to show and my wife. I was like, I got to show you guys my client, Austin. Like he just put this song out and he put out a slowed down and sped up version. And they were like, this is fucking dope. Like all of them, right? Oh. I, my favorite is the sped up version, actually. 
Really? I love the sped up version. I, I, I mean, I love all three of them. Uh, the slow down version puts you in a more like, mm, like a chill mood. And then the, the regular version is very passionate, but then the sped up version has a bit of a bit more of a groove where you want to dance. So they all have like different vibes. Yeah. Cause I've noticed, cause you know, I've noticed some artists, you know, putting out, um, different versions like that lately with their music like they'll have the normal version um, then they'll have like a sped up slow down a remix that sort of deal so I was like you know let me let me let me try this out let me see what happens and you know I, I even had another friend reach out to me through Instagram and was like yo dude the sped up version sounds good and I'm like wow it's a good thing I did you know put out those two bonus tracks because you know it you know it just offers more variety absolutely it's a no-brainer like yeah i mean i never so so i never knew this about this like so when i saw you do it like you're the first person that i saw do it like i'm not privy to all this and then one of my friends who i was with he was like oh yeah have you heard like the new french montana album i'm like not really i don't really listen to french montana too much why he's like french montana put out like five versions of his album like all different like sped up slow down that that i'm like Okay, he's like, yeah, a lot of people are doing this where they're releasing multiple versions, apparently. So I'm I didn't know that until you brought it to my attention. That's actually pretty sick. I I might I might I might consider that later on down the line. I don't know. Maybe. We'll we'll put that one on the back burner. <laughs> Multiples. Yeah. Well, like one thing I was thinking about doing, like I have a song coming out called uh I don't remember the name of my own song, but Camp Camp. I think it's called Can't Blame Me. Can't Blame Me? Yeah, I think yeah, that's I think what that it sounds called. right. Okay. I don't remember. I dropped it in Slack sometime, but the original version of it, when I was writing to it, it only had like two things, like a piano and a string, and that was it, the whole song. And I had like a chorus and a verse and a chorus, and I was going to make it like an acoustic sounding song. Mm -hmm. I had that for months in my phone, like full song written. I just didn't record. Then I produced it, put like a bunch of other stuff, put drums, like really fully produced it. Now it's like a full song, but I'm going to put out the acoustic version, which really was the original version. Just mute the drums, maybe mute a couple of my melodics and just put that out with it. Like a two song, a little two song thing. You know what I mean? Oh, that's, that's sweet. Yeah. I, but I, I, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, it's a banger. But back to you. Let, let me ask you <laughs> this too. So walk us through... You know, I know it a little bit. Obviously, I fucking created it. You know it. But walk, you know, somebody watching this video, walk us through like kind of the step-by-step -step process you had to go through from where you were, which was like a songwriter only to then now fully producing, mixing, mastering, putting out your songs. What's like the actual process you had to go through in terms of like learning that stuff? Okay. So, all right, kid get prepared to take notes okay first and first first things first you know you got to have the right equipment so basically one of uh i had mentioned this earlier in like this call but i'll say it again definitely get you an audio interface um a laptop your uh, external hard drive to store all your work in i highly recommend like um a one TB, two TB, or or greater, you know, just as long as it's within that storage range. Because, you know, he said, Lee said it himself, you know, as a creator, you're going to create multiple songs. So eventually you're going to like, you're going to want a bunch of storage to store all that work. Right. You know, smart. Definitely. Um, so get the good, right, get the right gear. We talked about that, right? So get, get the right gear. Yeah. Get the right gear. And then next thing um software your your software ableton 11 that's what i use um lee and a bunch of other people in the academy they use like a uh, logic pro right. um i think that's only exclusive for like the macbooks or whatever but you know ableton 11 or um logic so those are your best friends let me sorry to cut you off i i really want to get this nailed down clearly it does not matter if it was logic or ableton because when I first created this academy in, I was really working on it 
quarter four of 2022. That's when I was putting it all together. And I actually had someone tell me you should only work with people who have logic because Lee, you're not competent in any other DAW. So I listened to them, but then I broke out of it when a different person was like, fuck that. Just get people who actually are dedicated to finding answers on their own. I said, okay. And then I, you're the first. Yeah, actually you are the first person who enrolled that was not on logic. And dude, you never have had a problem. You've never had a problem. At right, all. Like we, 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 we made it work. We made yeah, it work. I mean, what was that like? The fact that you had Ableton and I, I mean, I teach the course and I use logic. I'm not really teaching logic. I'm teaching production, but what was that process like? Was that hard for you? Was that kind of like whatever, not a big deal for you? Do you think there should be changes in the program where maybe I should change some things around based on that? I wouldn't say it's difficult per se. It definitely takes some getting used to. Like, I mean, you're not going to, you know, like get the hang of it right away. It does take a bit of like time to like understand certain tools and how they function. But, you know, for me, it, I think probably after like a week or so was when I really started to feel more confident with the program and how to maneuver about it. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'd say, you know, no matter what software you use, you know, just as long as you, you know, test it out, um, try a few different things, see what works, everything else should fall right into place. Mm. Okay, cool. Solid. So that wasn't bad. Okay. So gear up. We've got the hardware, the software. What's the next part of it? So the next part is, um, splice, um, this this is my audio cut off no, you're good i hear you i hear you you're good okay so the next thing is splice this is this is where you're going to find a bunch of cool sounds to um use in like your you know your beat beat phase so Drums, keys, synths, guitar, a whole library of instruments. Um, what's really cool about this program is that, um, you know, you can listen to all these sounds and you can click on the ones that, um, that, that are kind of like your favorite, you know, you can favorite them and you can click the plus sign on them, drag them over into the, um, the project that you're using and it'll just automatically um export the sound yep. so like you could just whatever sounds you hear if you like them you could just click and drag them into your program and they'll be there and you can modify them to your liking like changing the keys uh tempo you know you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it you can even chop it up and you know do whatever to it you right. know make it make it more your own Exactly. So splice is a big one, making the beats, then like writing the lyrics, right? And then recording, mixing, mastering is kind of those next steps. What was the uh, what was the most fun step, or what is the most fun step for you in the whole music creation phase? Definitely the beat making, and I and and listen, Lee has kind of made this like running joke here and there. Like I think I even saw it on his Instagram story one time. But it's like, warning: if you join this program, um, just so you you might you might get addicted to making beats. Um, consult yeah. to your doctor or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It was. I think it, I say it, something it was, like it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, like I won't finance your rehab check ins or some shit like that or something, but. Yeah. Okay. So you like the beat making. Yeah. Like just, you know, really getting to hear all these different sounds come together, trying out these different like melodies or beats, you know, it's like back, like, like, I think it was like back in December when we did the beat making songwriting contest, like I was just making all sorts of different beats, like exploring all these different genres and looking back on them, I was like, Wow, this is like, I, I was like a completely different person for each and every beat that I made. Like I was feeling myself in a different, in a different character. And it was like, it was crazy you know, mm. that I'm able to like adapt to so many different 
genres the way I did. I love how you said the word character. Like I never have thought of it that way, but I really like that. And I have to say, like for you especially, you make a lot of different styles. I mean, they're all great. Everything you do is really good. And like, I mean, vocally, production, it's a big thing. I think that's a huge skill of yours and a talent of yours that you have, Austin, that not everyone has. Like to be able to jump genres, like you can do a rap song, you can do something like Someday, which is more of like an R&B song. There's just so many styles that you have. And it's like, every time Austin drops a song, you kind of don't know what you're going to get. And you're excited to hear it. You know, it's going to sound good, but you don't know what you're going to get. So, okay. So making beats is the most fun. What is, what did you feel like was the most challenging part? Hmm. I would have to say probably, probably maybe like the lyrics, like probably just songwriting though. I will say lately I have been getting better at it. I feel myself getting better, you know, because I've just been constantly writing, um, jotting, noting different ideas that I've had in my head. So mm. it's like, so it's like, it's, it's getting there, you know? Right. I, I, you know, what's crazy. I've been doing songwriting and lyrics the longest 13 mm. years of that. I've only been, I mean, well, not only I've been producing for seven years, but songwriting lyrics, 13, still the hardest. Still the hardest thing for me. Beats is the easiest for me. Lyric writing is the hardest. I would say it's getting easier and mixing is hard, but I'm getting, I'm even mixing. I'm getting a little better at, and it's getting a lot easier for me as well. Um, okay. But I, I love that you said the lyrics thing, because I think a lot of people struggle with that, even though that's what we mainly do, but it's like, we still struggle with it. Um, I mean, and so looking at, looking into your career now, like, like, you know, we talked about where you're at, what you've been able to do, like what's next for you. Definitely to continue with the rapid fire music Academy, continue doing my thing, yeah. um, making beats, creating, just creating, you know, continue pumping out songs and, you know, continuing to share that with, share that with my family, my, the, the rapid fire academy the my my followers everyone you know just continue to keep moving forward with everything mm. i love it oh you're definitely continuing with rapid fire i ain't letting you go <laughs> so okay. uh that's awesome well austin thank you so much for today <laughs> man i'll drop it in the description of the video but just kind of where can people find your music where can they connect with you the best oh definitely so you can follow me guys on Instagram and TikTok at austin.b Oh wait, no, hold on. Let let, <laughs> let 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 me let me double check real quick cuz I feel like I tend to I tend to mix it up a bit. Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at austinb.416. So a u s t i n b.416. Love it. Love it. And the music, what's what it's just Austin Bishop. How can people find you on Spotify and Apple? Yeah. So you can look me up on Spotify and Apple music at Austin Bishop with the O slashed. So it's Austin Bishop, but the zero or the O is like a slash. So you have to kind of like, I think if you're like on your phone, you just hold the O and it should prompt you with like the slashed O. Hmm. If that makes sense. Let me see if I can see it. Okay, got it. So you have to hold the O down and you get the yeah. O with the slash through it. Mm -hmm. Huh. Oh yeah, you're right. Huh. Sick. Yeah, I thought I thought that looked pretty cool. So I love that. I think that's super smart. I'm 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 a supporter. Um well that's great. Well, Austin, you know, thank you so much for today, man. I really appreciate it, obviously. We're going to keep in touch here in the Academy still. So just let me know anything you need help with, man. And uh, I guess last final thing, let's say someone's watching this and they booked a call with me and they're kind of like in that phase of like getting ready to enroll or get the, on the call with me. What would you say to them? Do it. <laughs> you, you listen, 
this this is a life changing opportunity. So I I'm telling you from experience, please give Lee a chance. He knows what he's doing, and he's definitely going to help you out. Trust. Fuck yeah, Fuck yeah. that's fucking <laughs> that that that's perfect. Austin, you're the fucking man. Thank you so much, bro. Really appreciate it. Of course, and thank you so much for everything, Lee. Great, you got it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure, bro. You're awesome. Thanks, Austin. Anytime, Lee.